Good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time of day it is where you're at. Welcome to Collider Dailies. I'm John Algis, and I'm joined by the wonderful Perry. How you doing, Perry? I am doing well. I'm happy. I am happy to be back on the show. I am happy to slowly be readjusting to United States time. So <laughs> I feel like a person again, John. Well, that's good. How was your, how was your trip? It was incredible. Really, like really incredible. Um, I spoke a little bit about it last Friday. Yeah, Friday. I'm allowed to say where I was. I was on the set of the new Alien series in Thailand. And John, you know how set in my ways I am, especially when it comes yeah. to food. I made the absolute most of being in a new place. And I ate so many different things. And I used every free second I had there to explore Bangkok. That's fantastic. I am I'm I'm jealous because you got to you got to travel over there and th I'd like that's some place that I would love to visit someday. And also I'm super jealous because of why you were over there. <laughs> being an alien super yet. fan and I'm sitting here just like uh, 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 hmm. I have to keep all that information to myself, but I can at the very least tease I have a lot of information that I am very eager to share with everyone. The first second that you can talk about it, you and I are having a conversation. Oh yeah. I'm, ha I'm happy to do that. <laughs> Anyways, we've got uh, quite the show for you today. We are going to be, or Perry is going to be reviewing Abigail. We're going to be talking about Now You See Me 3. Also, at the end of the show, we're going to have a little bit of an announcement, so be sure to stick around for that. But let's start things off with Now You See Me 3, which added three cast members to the roster. It added Ariana Greenblatt, Justice Smith, and... I lost the name. Uh, Dominic Sessa. Dominic Sessa. <laughs> Sorry. I had it all written and I don't know why I lost it. Uh, these three have joined the cast. They're going to be working alongside original cast members. Uh, the people who are returning from the first two films who are Jesse Eisenberg, Woody Harrelson, Isla Fisher, Dave Franco, and Morgan Freeman. Perry, how excited are you for this cast? Did you like the the first two films? Let's start I prefer, with that. I prefer the first film to the second film, but I liked both well enough. And one of my favorite things about Now You See Me and it becoming a franchise and also it becoming a franchise that adds a new installment so long after the second film was released is the fact that it's an entirely original film franchise that has had enough staying power to justify more movies now. Like, I think that's yeah. a really important thing to emphasize because most of the time we have things like that pop up, it's it's tied to, to very popular IP. And that's not the case with this. I also just am like a big old sucker for, for magic. And I love how they melded that with the heist genre. The cast, the original cast is phenomenal. I love these three new additions. These new three, these new three, one hundred percent up my hype for another Now You See Me movie. I am very eager to see what Dominic Sessa does after the release of The Holdovers. That was a very, very big debut for him, and all eyes are going to be on what he does next, and not just with Now You See Me. I think the the most immediate project yeah. he takes after that. So this is a very interesting choice for him. Justice Smith, I think, is like one of the best of the best of his generation out there. He's he's taken on some really interesting things. He has the franchise yeah. experience. So I think he's really teed up for success here. And then Ariana Greenblatt is just like her career is exploding before our eyes. I'm just going to name them the most recent things, of course, with Barbie and then the upcoming Borderlands movie. But those those two and now you see me three are just like the smallest portion of a really big filmography at such a young age. Plus, not to mention, I mean, it was a it was a relatively small part in the grand scheme of things. But she's also in Ahsoka, so like she she's had some pretty heavy hitters in an, in a fairly short career already. She's just seemed to have come out of the gate swinging. I will say that of these three, the one that I'm the most excited to watch is Justice Smith, just because I. I enjoy pretty much anything that he's ever done. So you put him in a roster. He's not somebody that I'm going to like specifically like jump for joy that is there, but he's definitely like the, the sugar on top to get me to go see something. I always have a lot of fun with him and Dominic says like he blew me away with the holdover. So I am excited to see more from him. If you had asked me who I thought was going to show up and now you see me three, I, I wouldn't have necessarily thrown his name out there, but I'm not, 
I'm not hating it either. You asked me who was going to show up and now you see me three. I wouldn't be able to answer that question because, and this is another thing that really excites me about this franchise. I think the possibilities are endless. Like it's true. There, there's no type that belongs in this. It is literally open to any kind of personality. And I think that's one of the things that's really going to keep this movie and maybe others that follow super fresh. It's, I mean, like, it's one of these things where I'm not like, I'm not surprised that there's a third one, but if you had asked me when the first film came out, if I thought that it was going to become a franchise that would have a third film, I would have probably said no, because it, you know, it's original project. It's, you know, not, not necessarily like big and flashy. It's not like a huge blockbuster kind of deal, but it, it had a, it was received well enough and enough people have been fans of it. that now here we are. And, you know, you point out that it's been a while since the second one. It's true. I actually like kind of memory hold those two movies until I saw a bunch of stuff about this third one. So, you know, we'll just have to see how things go with it, but I am, I am tentatively interested to check it out personally. I'm, I'm pretty hopeful. Um, Fun fact, the first Now You See Me movie was one of my first set visits ever. And on on that set, I met two people who are still like my best friends to this day. So Oh, hell yeah. So you have now, like a Now You See Me has a, a very very special place in my heart. Very strong sentimental connection to the yeah. franchise then. Yeah. Very so, much. So then this is this is something that you're like you're right there for it. You're Oh yeah. You know, I'm here for it. Board. Uh <laughs> So yeah, be sure to check that out. Um, I don't know when the release date on it is and I don't have it written down, but uh, yeah, just be looking for that. It, it should be a fun time at the very least. I can't imagine that it's going to be, you know, it's going to be anything that is, uh, I'm trying to think how to word this anyways, whatever. Ignore me. My brain is fried right now. <laughs> With all that being said, let's move on to our second topic for the day, which is Perry here is going to be talking about a movie that is coming out this weekend that I'm actually quite excited to see. Yeah. Abigail. Perry, give us your thoughts. So, I mean, this is another uh, another uh, aspect of you know film right now that has a very big place in my heart. I'm, a spe I'm an especially big fan of a lot of people in the cast, but also been a, a big radio silence fan for for a very very yeah. long time now if uh you know if you haven't gone back and watched their their previous work before scream i mean ready or not's pretty well known but i also oh, highly yeah. recommend checking out their segment in uh, vhs and southbound they're like a really really cool filmmaking team and they keep the bar just as high as i would want them to with with abigail I always hesitate, John, to use the word fun because I feel like the word has picked up a negative connotation where you say fun as an excuse for a movie that's not that good. But like he still likes that. Like I use the word fun so wholeheartedly with Abigail. This movie is an absolute blast, a well-earned blast. And it's just if you are looking for a wild blood soaked ride on the big screen. Like there is no better movie to see than Abigail this weekend. And if you are someone who has looked at the vampire genre and thought to your, like, I've seen it all. I don't need any more of that. This movie is so incredibly playful with tropes in the way that it kind of, you know, skewers the things that you've seen time and time again. But I'm also very into the new mythology that it builds. And then on top of that, how hard they play into the idea that their main villain in this movie is a ballerina vampire. And Alicia Weir is something else in that role. John, did you see Matilda the Musical? I did not. Dude, you're I missing out on so much joy in this world by not having watched Matilda the Musical. I'll add it to my list. It is re really, it's very, very good. And it was abundantly clear that Alicia Weir is a natural movie star in that film. You, you couldn't do a bigger shift than going from Matilda to Abigail. And the combination of the two really makes it like so, so undeniable that her ability as an actor is absolutely endless. 
she because I mean this isn't a spoiler it's in the trailer so Abigail lures these criminals to her home to like to essentially eat them to play she wants to play with her food so in this movie we are essentially tasked with playing two characters like the tricky innocent 12 year old that these criminals think they're abducting and then the vicious vampire that wants to kill them all and the fact that she plays into both so heavily but still makes her feel like a cohesive character that is not an easy thing to do and she pulls it off so so well so alicia weir then we also have melissa barrera and I'll just use this as an opportunity to tease on this channel at 1 p.m. Pacific. You'll be able to see my hour-long conversation with Melissa about this movie. Before we had that conversation, I posted a, a reaction video on, on my TikTok and YouTube channel, and I described her character in the movie Joey as, as a pitch-perfect anchor for the film. And then she basically reiterated that in our conversation with that being, a, that being a goal, that she wanted the character to come across as like a grounding anchor. And then she's she's got this ensemble around her that, you know, is just like swinging for the fences in terms of big personalities and comedic beats. That all does not work and doesn't build an audience film attachment where you feel invested in the characters and the situation, unless you have a grounding force like Joey. And she really like walks that line between maintaining that, but being able to play with these really big personalities, especially well. I thought her work was top tier in this and just further solidified her as a horror genre powerhouse. The rest of the ensemble, John, is so, so good. I wanna name drop everyone. Dan Stevens, not gonna not gonna tiptoe too close into the extremes he goes to in this movie. But if you've seen any of his work, you know he can go there, and he very much okay. does. And this year we're really lucky because we'll get to see him go there in this movie and also Cuckoo, which comes out later this summer, and he's phenomenal in that as well. Um, Catherine Newton, just I obviously can't speak for her and her experience, but at least to me. It seems like she is having so, so, so much fun in this role. And that radiates off the screen and gives the audience the same feeling watching the movie and her performance in it. Then I will just say, Kevin Duran nearly steals this whole movie. Everything about his performance is spot on. Hands down, earned some of the biggest laughs of the entire movie during the screenings that I went to. He's so good. They're all so good together. It is like, it is a truly wild ride. All of the hype with how much blood is in this movie, like the movie meets those expectations. Matt Bettinelli Olpin and Tyler Gillette, the directors, I feel like they're becoming well known for like the blood cannon effect. And I love that, that they do that and they do it well and they earn it too. But really just more broadly, the two of them as a directing duo, I think are some of the absolute best out there when it comes to blending like truly terrifying horror with comedic fun. And again, I, I mean that that word wholeheartedly as a good thing. Yeah. And then also action set pieces. Like that, that is their style. And I think they've made, they've made a combination of those three things that makes a radio silence movie very easily identifiable. And what Abigail does is lean into that, but also add these really interesting new layers that very clearly show that every, with every single movie they make, they are honing their skills even further and expanding their skill set. So Loved Abigail, and then it also made me really excited to see whatever they do next. So I'm uh, the thing that I'm mostly curious about, and you know I've seen the trailers and I've seen a bunch of that sort of stuff, and I am going to go see it this weekend. But the thing that I'm mostly curious about, with it being a radio silence movie, how is the balance between the horror and the comedy sides of it? Like, do you feel like it falls more in the comedy side? Is it more scary? Is there like a perfect balance? Like, where does it sort perfect. of fall? Perfect balance. Perfect balance. I mean, I can't really break I can't really break it down into numbers, but I don't know. I get like I guess I guess kind of I guess kind of kind of even. It's like it's not the kind of movie that's gonna keep you up at night. 
if that's what you mean by horror at least but it's like it's it's loaded with um it's loaded with really tense set pieces you see it in the trailer a lot of it is yeah. is abigail hunting them in the house and while some of the conversations between the characters are very playful I don't think that ever takes away from any of the tension of the fact that they are trapped in the house with a vampire and something could be lurking around the corner at almost any moment. And then, so this film is actually, uh, in case people don't know, this film is actually a reimagining of a 1936 universal monster movie called Dracula's daughter. Uh, I'm a little bit curious if it has, a, if it has any elements of sort of classic vampir vampire films to it, or if it's, very much a modern take on it. I feel I feel like that comparison when it was made might might have been a little overblown. It it very much feels like a like an original story to me. Yeah. There there's there's a lot of um there's a lot of direct references to other vampire movies and also just things naturally built into the narrative that that we've seen before but are being used or assessed in a new way. So I think what they've done with the existing vampire films is incredibly creative, enjoyable, and then is further used to bolster their own original take on what their vampire can do and is up to. I'm really proud by how well I just danced around so many spoilers. Um, <laughs> I did want to reference this particular comment just because obviously I just heavily emphasize how damn good Kevin Durant is. I like, I do think he's a very, very accomplished actor, but yeah. his name is not well known. And not, like dude should be a household name. And given how much faith I have in the new Planet of the Apes movie and his ability as a performer, I think the one-two punch of Apes and Abigail like could really up his star in a very, very big way. And I also, like, I haven't seen Apes, but I have very high hopes that that's going to be a very good movie because in addition to an actor like Kevin, I really trust the director on that movie, Wes Ball. I think he's got the perfect skill set to knock that kind of movie out of the park. Yeah, I think I think he's going to handle that film perfectly. Uh, and so with that, we will move past our final topic for the day. We're going to move into uh, a, a little bit of news that we have to talk about. Perry, do you want to take it away? I will. I will. So I feel like many of you could tell by John's tone that the news is a little bit of a bummer to us. But this week will be Collider Daily's final week. Changes, changes are hard. A lot of you well know I've been through many a change on this channel over, over many, many years of, of being on it. And, you know, while, while this one hurts, we just always have to hold tight to the idea that, you know, ch changes are made to make things stronger and better in a number of respects going forward. And what I, what I can say is that getting the opportunity to work on Collider Dailies with this specific team of people has been one of the one of the greatest joys for me in recent years. I feel like when we conceived of this show, it was it was like 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 Steve, like the two like we like we've got to do a regular a regular show to bolster the Collider brand and like strengthen our voice. Like we can't we can't do it alone. Who are we going to get? And when when like John and Maggie of all people became became the other two like key forces in front of the camera here. I'm like, like this is really exciting. Like I've I've got really high hopes that you know the two of you are going to build your voices and on-screen personalities in a way that people were really going to gravitate toward. I, you two just like above and beyond exceeded my expectations in that respect. And I, I I'm so incredibly proud of you and while dailies may not be going forward, I have no doubt in my mind. John, I know you're working on another thing on your own on the side in terms of a video podcast, but like if Maggie winds up doing the same, like I highly recommend all of you following them to whatever they do next in this capacity because really strong voices right there. And then also behind the scenes, Adam really like stepped up big time. This is 
This is not an easy show to produce and make happen on a regular basis. And what 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 I do, what John does, Maggie and Steve in front of the camera can be a very, very scary and vulnerable thing unless you know that you are in a safe set of hands. And I am so incredibly grateful to Adam for always making us feel well taken care of and like our faces are being shown on a well-produced show where we're supported. So I have to thank, oh, Adam, I have to thank um, all of you for your, your hard work because as much as I love clearly blabbing about movies and shows, it's only as much fun as the people that you're doing it with make it. And you have all really made the Collider Dailies experience a true joy for me. So thank you guys. Hmm. Uh, I remember when you first approached me with this idea, it was at San Diego Comic-Con. You came to me and you were like, hey, I have this idea. I think that we should do this thing. It was funny. You came up to me and like, I had only just met you like the day before and you were already like, Hey, let's do this thing. And you were so excited and it made me so excited. And it like getting the opportunity to do this and getting the chance to speak to this community, to this audience. And at the same time, be able to do it with, you know, such incredible people has been the highlight of my career. You know, I've been, I've been working in this industry now for almost a decade. And I can say with absolute certainty that Collider Dailies is my favorite thing that I've done yet. And the thing that I am the most proud of. And it, it, as much as it sucks that it's ending uh, I am looking forward to whatever's coming next uh, for everybody, for myself, for Maggie, for you, for Steve, for anybody involved. Because uh, I know that like we're not we're not stopping, you know, Clutter Dailies is stopping, but we're not going to stop working hard to provide everybody with the best quality information and entertainment that we possibly can the best commentary that we possibly can going out there every day and just kicking as much ass as we can. Like that's just, we're all, <laughs> we're all workaholics. Uh, <laughs> we, we do this because we love it. And I don't think that any of us uh, would do anything else. Um, and so, you know, this is, this is the last episode that I'm going to be hosting. Uh, we have two more episodes this week. I will probably be popping up on at least one of them just to properly say goodbye. But uh, I do just, you know, want to thank, want to thank the audience. Want to thank you, Perry. Want to thank uh, everybody involved with the show because this has been absolutely fantastic. And I'm, I'm going to miss it. Next week, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to be, I'm going to be sitting there being like, oh, what's today's episode of dailies? And then I'm going to get bummed out. I'm always a text message away, man. Anytime you want to talk about movies and TV, I'm here. Trust me. If you think for a second <laughs> that I'm not going to take every single opportunity to bug the crap out of you, you've got another thing coming. Cause oh. like I'm, I'm, I can be annoying. I'm not going to be, but when I you're my friend, you hear from me a lot. I look forward to it. I mean it. So, <laughs> To give you all a little bit of a heads up on how this channel will change going forward, because we definitely didn't want to make this announcement and then give you the impression like we're leaving you high and dry. So without dailies, a lot of you know, the only other thing that exists on this channel is Collider Ladies Night. And that is what this channel will become. As of Saturday, it will be rebranded Collider Ladies Night, and this will be the, the home for the show. And I, I've I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I, I've, li I've literally spent so much of my life in the last, I guess, eight years, like in this little box on this particular YouTube channel. And I have so, so much respect for the legacy of it for all the shows that came before and paved the way to what we're able to do now. So 
I just want everybody out there to know while, while it will only have ladies night content on it going forward with ladies night, I only ever want to do what came before it justice and do what I can to make those interviews stronger and stronger and make them even better content for you to all enjoy. So that is what you'll be able to find on this YouTube channel, which will no longer be called Collider Extras, but Collider Ladies Night. And there will be many, many episodes to come, hosted by me, edited by the wonderful Adam. So we will still be here just in different, in different capacities, in different roles. And given the fact that, you know, like, like John said, we're workaholics, it's, it's being a workaholic because we deeply love film television and what we do to our, our core. So yeah. I hope that gives you the utmost confidence that no matter how things are changing now and what happens going forward, that we will always bring that deep passion and enthusiasm to literally everything we do and give you. Um, just to clarify what Mike's asking, no, the, the channel will just forge forward and, and evolve in a new way, and you'll still be able to enjoy all the past videos, which I'm in that comment section all the time, everyone. I, I see what you are watching and what you are re-watching, so you'll still be able to enjoy years' worth of Collider content right here, and then new content along the way. Yeah. Like Ladies Night. Lots and of Ladies Night coming. Every single one of you should watch every episode of Ladies Night that's come before, every episode that's coming in in the future, and you should share it with every single person that you know. Because I need you to understand that even before I worked on Collider Dailies, or before I worked on Collider, I watched ladies night and i watched the shows that came before i came on to collider as a fan and a large part of that is is perry here uh because everything that she touches turns to solid gold so watch ladies night watch every episode three or four times uh because it is some of the best interview content that exists period on the internet anywhere it's fantastic so Go ahead and watch it. I appreciate you, John. I appreciate you, John. And I'll I'll just And I mean it. I'm not just buttering you up. <laughs> You're too kind to me, friend. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, that is where uh the episode is gonna come to a close. Here is here is what I will say about all of this. One final note. As I said, we have two more episodes. We have tomorrow, we have Friday. Uh we'll we'll answer any questions or comments that you guys have during the episodes if you guys want to hit us up on social media and you know ask questions or say whatever it is that you want to say we'll all be gladly responding to all that and as i said you can check out a whole bunch of stuff that we're all going to be doing in the future and you know collider is still going to be around and you should all still go to collider.com check out all the fantastic articles that are put up every single day by our talented team of writers and content creators over there uh just some absolutely fantastic stuff keep yourself informed on all your favorite entertainment stuff uh perry you said that you have uh ladies night going out today oh. is there is there anything else that is coming down the pipeline that you want to plug it's a big one. People know that I, uh, I'm, I'm like superstitious. I'm afraid to jinx anything. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to tease the other things in the works, but there's a reason why Melissa Barrera is ladies night's first three time guest. I have extreme respect for how damn talented she is, but also the thought and passion she puts into every single thing that she does. And we had, she was very generous with her time. It is a full hour long conversation. We talk about a significant amount of things and goals that she has. And of course, Abigail. So it is a conversation you do not want to miss. And it goes live right here at 1 PM PT today. I am so hyped for that episode. When I, when I saw that that was the episode that was going out today, I was like, Ooh, I'm going to, I'm going to watch that. I, so and I'll, I'll be there. Like any credit for it, John. Like, She's just good. Like she's good. She's, she's really talented on screen, but she's also a really good interview and is the type of interview that puts great thought into every answer she gives, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like you take a little bit of credit cause you're also a good interviewer. And of course, uh, Adam is a fantastic editor for those interviews. So just fantastic work on that. Check out that ladies night, check out collider.com. 
Uh, and with that, I'm going to be signing off as host. So I hope you have a fantastic rest of your life. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow's episode will be Perry and Steve. So be sure to tune in for that until uh, we meet again. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and we'll see you next time.